a client got back to me. Now what? Ah! Check out this video right now to find out. Hey, welcome to The Millionaire Recruiter. I'm Brandon Rudy, your Millionaire Recruiter. If you have not seen this channel before, it is about upping your game in the recruiting industry. So let's have fun. So anyone that works in external agency recruiting, whatever you want to call it, is always, or open, even opening their own business, is always so concerned about clients. Probably because they pay your bills. <laughs> so with all reason. Um, we can talk about, again, what comes first, the candidates or the clients. I've got a couple videos on that. But really, what do you do when a client gets back to you? That seems to be a very common question. And I think it's because you're overthinking it. So if you've seen my, the videos before, you're going to know that I'm a big believer in underthinking. <laughs> uh, I like you to just do, react, and ask for forgiveness because honestly, you're just not gonna know enough ever. I don't know enough. I've done it for 14 years. There's tons of other people I can learn from that I'm excited about learning from, which is exactly why I love comments and questions below. <laughs> so put that there. Uh, but what I'm saying is you have to just find your own voice in this giant recruiting industry. And you do that by trying things out and you do that by being yourself. So I could, you know, give you templates on everything I say to clients and how I handle that first conversation. I can do a share screen. That's always fun. But I really want you to grasp how you want to be a recruiter and how you decide to do this is really all up to you. And it's very important, but I'll give you a couple pointers. So a client gets back. Number one rule, I think, is getting back very quickly. Again, that's why you don't want to overthink it because you're like you're nervous. Like I recently had a company reach out to me actually that oh, is a big company, <laughs> very cool company. And there was a part of me that like freaked out, by the way, not just a part of me, it was my, all of me that freaked out because this is like a dream client contact for me, for sure. So first I called and text a couple people very quickly and be like, someone to reach out to me, ah! you know, so you have to have like those moments, but then very swiftly I got back and I was like, all right, they're contacting me because I know what I'm doing. This is good. Uh, I will set this meeting and I will set it as soon as possible because without looking desperate, <laughs> because uh, you don't want to overthink. You don't want to get nervous. You don't want, when you, when the nerves get in the way, holy moly, you are just off your game. You need to be on your A game. And the way to be on your A game is yes, be prepared. I know everyone wants to be prepared, but do not overthink it. So you respond to the client, potential client within Honestly, it's all about timing. I wouldn't wait long, longer than an hour if you can help it. Uh, I know I talk a lot about that. This is kind of like the dating world matchmaking space. Um, and in the dating world, you wait two days to get back to someone after a date, which is complete crap, I think. So don't do that. <laughs> Definitely get back pretty quickly. If they sent you that email, that means they're sitting down thinking of you. Now, you don't need to press send and receive within like two minutes of getting it, but within, I would say, 20, 30 minutes, no longer than an hour, you should be responding to that client and never leave the ball in their court. So for example, let's just say Google reaches out to me and said, Hey, Brianna, you know, I'd really, really love your help with recruiting. Can we schedule a call? I forget your things. Um, what's your availability looking like? So what, if you have a calendar, send that over. Otherwise you give a few different options. So it'd be like, Hey, Google team, Super interested in hearing from you. Glad you reached out. I'm available. Let's just say it was Monday. I'm available tomorrow and Wednesday at X amount of times. Give them at least, I would say at least four options for sure. Um, or like just little like time slots, right? Or send your calendar link, whatever works. But I would prefer even more so not to send a calendar link and I would just give them direct times. And then you're going to be the one in facilitating that meeting. So now all of a sudden Google gets back and says, Okay, great. Wednesday at two works. Your response is great. I just set up a zoom invite for you, except, um, and look forward to hearing more from you on Wednesday, by the way, any additional context as to what roles you need filled or what help you, you want. I would love to look this up before a call. That's the crucial part because again, you can go into any single call blind, but the least amount of experience you have, that's not a great idea. So, any kind of idea as to what Google wants, 
you want to look at, you want to be prepared. Um, because also then you're going to be preparing for something that you have no idea about. Now, let's just say Google's like, oh, I'll just hold that for the call. Uh, or they just accept your invite and never respond because that happens too. And you're going to be nerve, you're just nerve wracking and oh my God, I'm going in blind. You're not going in blind. Okay. You look at their job role, your, their positions on their site, their career page. Um, you go into whatever your niche is first. Like you can peruse really like, let's just say they have thousands of openings, right? In this case, Google, but like uh, not many companies are like that. So you look, what are they hiring for? What sectors are they hiring for? And then realize like, look, you're going to talk about your niche. If they want you to go outside of your niche, you need to be honest. Please be honest. I have tried this before and fell straight on my face. <laughs> if so example, my, my genius is tech, all software engineering, all different, um, you know, sectors there. But let's say someone said, Hey, Brandon, can you do product? My response would be, I have done product before. It's not my genius. Genius is tech. They do overlap. And I do believe that you can develop a good Boolean search when you just do a little bit of a research and I can sync with you properly or with the hiring manager. So what I did was made the other side feel comfortable with me taking on a search, but also very straightforward. Like this is not the search that I can instantly have a pipeline for you, but I can build a pipeline. And then, you know, we can talk about averages there on a different video on like what's average to build pipelines. But essentially this is just all about how do you get back to a client um, swiftly, right? Within an hour at the very, like the very latest, um, you want to have a call to action and be real. This is like that point where you're really aggressive, uh, where you are just basically saying, this is what I'm available, this is what I can do, what can I research first? So that shows that you have the time for them. It shows that you do want to get ahead of it and be prepared because that's the type of person you are. So that's great. Uh, and then you're also then sending that calendar invite, which shows that you're organized. So those are all the wonderful things that a client has to see first. Um, then remember, you're going to go on their job, their career page. You're going to check that out. And I would definitely check out their LinkedIn. Um, I do do sourcing maps on, on companies when I first work with them, but this is not that time. So I want to acknowledge you do not spend a ton of time researching potential clients. The job of a client, so they're coming to you because you're the expert, right? You are needed, your services are needed. Therefore, they cannot and should not expect for you to research their company like crazy, okay? You definitely go on their career page because you don't wanna go in there blind. You definitely look at that person's LinkedIn, the person that reached out to you from the company, you, look at their LinkedIn and you add them as a connection and simply say, looking forward to connecting further Wednesday, you know, whatever day it is. Right. Um, so you do that due diligence, but honestly, nothing more. If you want to go on Crunchbase to completely understand what they do, remember crunchbase.com, you want to go on that to understand what they do, or just go on their about us section on their site. I know that there are some companies, especially since I've been like such high tech, sometimes companies, they even have their about us section and I'm like, God, what do they do? <laughs> but again, a company is not going to quiz you. Do you know what we do? And even if they do, you're going to be like, no, I haven't looked too much into it, but I see what you're hiring for because guess what? They're not reaching out to you because you're an expert at their company. That's their job. They're reaching out to you because you're an expert at filling their roles. So just know your stance, be confident, get excited. For me, what helps with nerves on client calls, especially is I always have their website in front of me at any given moment. Okay. And that person's, I don't know, I'll peruse their LinkedIn, their profile um, before, see if I have any kind of connection or common denominator that I can instantly connect with because what do people love doing? Working with people they really like. So find that connection, okay? Be quick, be efficient, um, show that you're organized and enjoy that the clients are reaching out to you. And by the way, this goes both ways. Like, let's just say that you did just client outreach and this is them responding to you. I wanna let you know, those in my opinion, is this, it, that's the same thing. Obviously, if they get reach out to you, like a cold email, reach out. They really need you, like really, really need you. And they've been referred to you. So that's super cool. That is like the warmest lead ever. Um, but even if they just responded to your email, that also shows 
just about the same amount of interest that they do in fact need you. And this is where you as a recruiter are in the driver's seat. So take control, ask the right amount of questions. That's a whole other video. <laughs> There's a whole company intake we can do, but um, ask the right questions, be prepared as far as that goes, and then be, but really be prepared in articulating your recruiting voice. Okay. Understand if they ask you, just in case, I wouldn't let them ask a ton of questions. I would then lead, I would lead the conversation. But if they ask, why should we use you? Have that answer ready. And you should always know why someone should use you because you want to be that great recruiter, that millionaire recruiter, always doing the best practices. So enjoy. Please put some amazing stories down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't, but put some amazing stories down below on either bloopers of client calls, because I do have those, which actually I should probably tell you about. Um, and then also like big success stories or ones that you were so nervous for. Like I stand up sometimes. Sometimes I put like a, a pen in, <laughs> right here on my palm to like calm you down. Like just find what calms you and what makes you focused and go for it and have fun and hone your craft, right? Love the recruiting world. All right, I will see you every Thursday at noon and do not forget that money is just a vessel that gets you to do all the amazing things you wanna do in life. So go live it, see you next week.